who's ready for the word. Amen? Amen. Very good. For the past five and a half months, I've been doing this at you, and now you're back down there. <laughs> That's kind of weird and stuff, but don't be fouled. Don't be fouled. You know, it's so interesting. We come up to this time of year, and I, I think turkeys have taken over really what Thanksgiving is all about. But I want to talk about not being fouled. Let me start off with a couple of scriptures here. Oh, by the way, before I get going, Sean and Amy, would you stand? Sean and Amy Rain, they are, they are the... Rocky Mountain Assemblies of God Church Ministries Directors for our district. And they are with us this morning. And um, there's so much going on this morning, I almost forgot to point you guys out, which I wanted to do that. They, it's a new position. We used to have a district youth director and some different ministry directors. And our, our district merged them into one position that they oversee. And I know that they were up working in Loveland to plan for our, our youth's fine art convention yesterday. And they're like, we're going to pop in on your service. I'm like, awesome. So we're so glad that they're here. Amen. And uh, he's already doing an amazing job. I like what I'm seeing, Sean. It's awesome. And, uh, and for those of you who are from Louisiana, so are they. And uh, so <laughs> got, 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 yeah, got a little New Orleans going on there. All right. Let me open up with a couple of scriptures. Psalm 68, 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation. Let me say that again. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. And Psalm 103, 1 to 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. You hear that? Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We're approaching a national holiday that has been absorbed by the Christmas season. I don't know if you ever, if you follow me on Facebook at all, you know that I despise the fact that Thanksgiving is swallowed up by Christmas. I love Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Actually, Easter is my favorite holiday because that's when Jesus rose from the dead. But Christmas is a great time of year, all the, all the fun and the festivities and stuff. But how greedy can we be to skip over Thanksgiving? And to jump over a holiday that was intended to be a day of recognizing the blessings that God has bestowed in our lives. Now, Thanksgiving didn't become a national holiday to well past the pilgrims. But when it was designated as a national holiday, it was for the purpose of acknowledging God and his blessings upon us as a Christian nation and all that he had bestowed upon us for that. And we often go back to the, to the first Thanksgiving and to the example of the pilgrims who after the worst year and a half of their lives, I used to pastor in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So that little, that little rock, Plymouth Rock, if you've ever seen it, it's not that big. It's smaller than the stage. It's not that big. But if you ever go back, back there and see that, you'll find out that those people, after living on a boat for all those years, after over half of their people dying from disease, after their commonplace burning down their meeting place, they still, after a year, gave thanks for all that God had done by bringing them to a new place, bringing me, giving them new friends and the Native Americans who were there, helping them to plant crops and to store up for the next year so the other half wouldn't die. And yet this day's become lost to football and food and parades. There's more things posted about, about recipes online and football teams than Thanksgiving to God. And the newest other thing that's pretty popular is the turkey meme. I have a turkey meme in there. Would you, would you throw it up there? Yeah, skinny turkey tees. I couldn't find the taco one where the, where the turkeys dress up like a taco. But I kind of, because I kind of like that one. But you know, it's all become about this bird. You know what turkeys are? They're fowl. I'm not saying F O W L, they're that too, but they're fowl, they're F O U L. They're kind of dirty birds. My sister in law has like eight or nine chickens. My, my sister actually has about 20 or 30. But my sister in law decided this year that on her little farm that she was going to raise um, six or eight turkeys. 
And she told my wife, she goes, I am never doing this again. They're mean, they're dirty, they're nasty birds, and I'm never going to do it again. They don't even plump up that much. Because turkeys are not pleasant creatures. Well, I sometimes think we can be like turkeys in America. I think we can get fouled and act just like this bird when we fail to recognize a God who has given us so much. I want to read you a couple of things that I, I, I pulled off of line. It says that the population of the earth was reduced to that of a small town with 100 people. It would look something like this. There would be 57 Asians. That's a lot of Asians. 21 Europeans. 14 Americans, both North and South. So all of both Americas. And 8 Africans. 52 would be women. And 48 would be men. 70 would have colored skin, and 30 would be Caucasian. 89 would be heterosexual, and 11 would be homosexual. Six of those 100 people would own 59% of the world. Did you hear that? Six of those 59, or, or six of those 100 people would own 59% of the whole world and the wealth of the world and they would all be from the United States of America. 80 would have bad living conditions. 70 would be uneducated. One would have a computer. Who's got a computer at home? Raise your hand if you've got a computer at home. You would be in the top 1% of the world. Who's got more than one computer at home? And only one would have a form of higher education. When you begin to look at the world from this point of view, you can really see that America, we are truly a land that is blessed. In fact, if, you, if this morning you woke up and you were healthy, you are happier than one million people who will die this week. If you never suffered a war, the loneliness of a jail cell, the agony of torture, or hunger, then you are happier than 500 million people in the world. If you could enter into church today without fear of jail or death, you are happier than three million people in the world who are under persecution to do that. I actually don't think that number is even accurate. And if there is food in your fridge, who's got food in your refrigerator? You got something. If you have shoes and clothes, nobody's naked. Everybody got shoes? Who slept in a bed last night? You slept in a bed last night. Who has a bed? You got a bed? If you slept on the chair, that was your fault. You have a bed. <laughs> Who has a roof over your head? You're richer than 75% of the people in the world. Anybody not have a bank account over the age of 18? <laughs> Anybody have a couple bucks in your wallet? Or a debit card? If you have a bank account and money in your wallet, you belong to the 8% of the world, people of the entire world that are considered well-to-do. You see, Americans live in the top 8% of the wealth of this world. And if you're hearing this, it says reading this because that's what I did when I found it, then you have to realize someone just thought about you. You don't belong to the 200 million people that can't read. And if you have a computer, you're part of that 1%. How much do we take for granted in our lives? And how much in America have we stopped and taken for granted all that we have and, and given thanksgiving to God for all that he has bestowed upon us, for all that he has poured into our land and into our lives because we are truly the richest nation in the world. We are truly one of the most blessed people. Our people, don't, our most impoverished live at a higher level than people in other parts of this world today. And yet we take for granted to give thanks. We take for granted to give thanks for the crops 
for the meat that we eat, for the grocery stores that we have. We have so much more available and accessible to us. You can buy food from all over the world in this nation. You can go into almost any store anymore and find things imported from every corner of this world. And we have great blessing, and most of us have the ability to buy some of that stuff. We have homes and vehicles and cell phones and computers. So much more than just the necessities of life. Yet we can act like a foul. We can act foulish. There's a nice pun on words. Turkeys are fowls, so they can act that way. But why do we act like turkeys? Why don't we have thanksgiving and gratitude? I want to talk about three turkey behaviors this morning, okay? Y'all ready for three turkey behaviors? Doesn't that sound biblical? Y'all ready for that? Smile at me. <laughs> don't be a bird, okay? The first thing that turkeys do are they peck each other. Have you ever watched them? One bird gets upset, he starts pecking at the other bird. And then that bird goes and pecks at a different bird. And then another one pecks at another bird. And before you know it, everybody's pecking at each other. They're beating at each other. Birds have this thing about pecking order. What they're trying to do is position themselves in the group to be higher up, to be on top. You know, humans peck one another as well. In fact, we've been in a study, and we'll be back in that study next week. But we've been in a study on God's healing for our broken emotions and God's healing our broken hearts. And we've been talking about things. One of the things that break people's hearts the most is the human's ability to peck one another and try and position themselves in greater places than another person. To establish who's boss, to establish who has control, or to establish who's on top. Because we're not content in who we are or where maybe God has placed us in life. And sometimes those who are in the lowest places in life, what we might call low, peck the most to try and find somewhere that they can be on top. In the animal world, animals show things by dominating one another. We see when moose will fight each other or elks will fight each other to show who's the king of the herd or who's in charge of, of all the others or who's the biggest stud of the group. But humans become the same way, and when we peck each other, we often will put other people down so we can put ourselves up. We get critical. Look at our nation today. All people do, if we could just blow Washington up, I think our world would be so much better. If it blows up tomorrow, I had nothing to do with it. All they do is peck at each other all the time. I used to love watching news and things like that. I can't even get near news shows anymore. Stop beating one another up. Stop lying about each other constantly. Stop. Why don't we just do something to fix problems instead of pecking one another? Because everyone's trying to be the bigger, stronger turkey. And that's about what they all are. Critical nature happens because we lose sight of who God has made us to be. We lose sight of what God has done for us or who God has created us. We lose sight of the fact that it doesn't, we don't have to be, the there will always be someone greater than us. There will always be someone more powerful than us. There will be always someone who can construct or, or create or sing or dance or play an instrument or do math or do science or do English or write. Someone will always be better than us. To find the best in the world is a pretty hard thing to do. And it really just doesn't matter. You don't have to be. I know I don't have to be the most perfect preacher. I don't have to be the best pastor. I want to be the best pastor I can for you, but I don't have to like be one of the superstars out there. Because if I am where God wants me to be, I need to be content in where God's placed me and where he's put me and enjoy that. Why do we begrudge other people their own blessings? Why do we allow jealousy and covetousness to take over things Instead of just being thankful for who we are and where God has placed us. After all, if we look at the breakdown of the world, every one of us is better off than 75% of the world. So we don't need to peck at one another to feel good. I'm glad that our church isn't a real big, this is not a pecking order church. I appreciate that. You guys don't peck at each other. I really appreciate that. Maybe it's because we know Psalm 139, 14 says, I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Kind of talked about that last week in our series. 
Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Each of us is wonderfully made by God. Made the way we are, who we are, as we are, because that's how God made us to be. Now, our sinner man, that needs to get dealt with. But who God has created us to be, we are his creation. Amen? We need to recognize that we are in Christ and be thankful for all he's done. This is how Paul described the Christian who has a thankful heart and how he behaves towards others. Instead of pecking one another, this is what they're to do. Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Y'all, y'all out there this morning? Yeah. Amen. Okay. Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. It's been the crux of the series we've been in. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Say that. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So let's not peck one another, but let's be thankful people treating one another with the same kindness and grace God has shown us. Amen? Another thing that turkeys do is turkeys get their feathers ruffled. If you look at the bird on the screen, he's got ruffled feathers. If that bird's feathers weren't ruffled, he'd be this little tiny body thing like this. That's not all body, that's all feather. The wild turkey, and that's what that is, has 3,500 feathers. And they use those feathers to ruffle themselves up so they would look much greater or bigger in appearance. It's not because they're agitated. It's often because they want to present themselves more than what they are. It's often a state of discontentment where they want to just look bigger than they are. They don't have that girth in their body. They don't have that girth in their actual, in their actual build. So they blow it up blowing themselves up with their feathers. Well, you know, I think sometimes we're not happy with those things that we have. Discontentment, in a sense, is the state of a ruffled bird trying to be bigger and have more than what it has. Philippians 4.11 says, Paul said, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Whatever state I'm in, to be content. 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 8 says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Do you hear that? If you truly want gain in this world, it's not about how big you can ruffle your feathers, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. To be content, not only with who we are, but to be content with what we have. Not to look and say, that person has so much more than me. Not to look and say, that person makes more money, that person has a better job, that person has a bigger car, that person has but to be content with where God has placed us and what he has given into our lives. We have so much to be thankful for. Learning to be thankful and not ruffling up our feathers so people think that we are more than what we are, but just being content with what we have. The third thing kind of takes the two together. And do you know that turkeys are low flyers? Do you know turkeys can fly? Has anyone seen a turkey fly before? Raise your hand if you've seen a turkey fly before. Some of you, they fly low. They're big, cumbersome, awkward birds. But do you know that a turkey can fly 55 miles per hour? That's pretty fast. For those kind of bumbling birds, you also know the turkey was almost our national bird? That's scary. 
we would have been like respecting the turkey, not roasting it. <laughs> Turkeys are big and bumbly, but they fly low. They can fly fast, but they fly low. Years ago, we were in West Virginia. We were staying in this little um, log cabin kind of out in the country. And I was out on the deck one morning, and I saw this big, cumbersome bird go flying by fast, but go flying by. And it was a wild turkey, and it was low to the ground. It was the most awkward thing I had ever seen. The problem with flying fast and flying low is you can bang into things. So the turkey actually becomes very encumbered in its flight because their speed is inhibited by brush and trees, objects and obstacles that get in their way. <coughs> they have to toil to fly because it's not like the bird who goes way up into the sky and flies and can just kind of soar like the eagle. They got to get around stuff. And getting around stuff is troublesome. And you know, what happens in our lives is when we allow negativity, when we allow the negative things, when we allow the complaining, when we allow the discontent to flood our souls, rather than being content in who we are in Christ, we end up flying low like turkeys do. We end up flying, instead of above the problems and the issues of life and soaring, we end up flying low and banging into things. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I don't know about you, I'd rather soar with the eagles than fly low like the turkeys. To take out those obstacles, the negative things, and to put and allow a grateful heart to set into our spirit. There's something we can all find negativity on. But you know what? You can find what's negative in your life or you can realize what you have is probably so much better than somebody else. Emmett was actually telling me a story this morning about, he's like, you know, there was these, these people came over, and I'm going to tell it wrong, Emmett, but I'm going to attempt to tell it, okay? He said, this, this one guy comes over, and he's like going, you know, I don't know what God's going to do. You know, I, I, I have palsy. That's bad. And the other person said, well, I'm blind. That's worse than palsy. And the other person said, well, I'm a, I'm a leper. That's worse than that. But I have palsy. Third person comes up and says to them, hey, my name is Lazarus. I'd like to meet you. Because, you know, Lazarus was dead. You see, sometimes we can look at the wrong in our life, but we still have life. And God has still given us something there to live for. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In all things, give thanks. So as we come to this week of Thanksgiving, I know this. I'm amazingly thankful for, for this building. I'm amazingly, you know, years ago when we came, I remember people said, we don't want to go build a building somewhere else. We want to bloom where we're planted. We want to stay here. This is where God's put us. And we, we have done what we've done so we can set up for God to continue to expand our church and expand our ministries here and expand those whose lives that we touch by, by making flow and functionality a lot better and a lot easier. But more than that, I'm very thankful the project's basically just about over. Hey, I can go back to just being a pastor. I can take all those other hats off. I don't wear a hat as a pastor. I just am. But you know, let's be thankful in all things. And so many times I have to tell you through that project, I had to stop, and, and, and I didn't go announcing this to the world, but I had to stop when I was feeling pretty frustrated and just say, okay, God, I have to thank you for all that's going on. I have to thank you for everything that you're doing. Psalm 103, 1 to 5, I read it at the beginning. Let me read it again. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives, what is it? All your iniquities or sins. Who heals your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Why? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's not be foulish, but let's be like that eagle who's soaring above things. Let's not heck one another because we wish we were more than we are. Let's not get our feathers ruffled because we want more than we are and we're discontent. Let's not fly low in negativity, but instead let's be people. Let's show the world what it is to be people who have thankful hearts, who appreciate whatever God has placed into their lives, 
And let's not take for granted all that God has bestowed upon us. Would you bow your heads with me this morning?